How's it going, everybody? I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. A couple of weeks ago, I posted a video on just technicians getting out there, getting started on parks on the year. And I got a lot of really good feedback from that. And people asking, give us a quick just how to on get started in POTA, like how to go out and be an activator or how to be a hunter, right? All those just little crash course, if you will, as my channel's name is implying, right? A crash course to this ham radio thing. Well, I think it's pretty straightforward. I really do. I think getting on, uh, started in Parks on the Air is super easy, super rewarding, and a lot of fun. I think the first step is obviously go to the Parks on the Air website. Link is in the description for all the links. Make yourself an account here, right? That's going to be the big first step. Second big first step, and boy, howdy. Maybe you should do this first, actually. Let's pull up the map, the photo map. Go to Maps of Entities. Click on that bad boy. And uh, you're going to be in here somewhere. If you click that little compass icon, it's going to find you. But all these little yellow dots as I'm zooming out is POTA entities. Oh, look, I'm all the way over in Las Vegas. Let me zoom in closer here to my home location. Maybe, maybe, maybe. There we go. This is the park I like to go to a lot. Obviously, I, I've got all these beaches down here I can hit up. But I like this Chino Hill State Park. I don't know why. I feel like if you're going to a park, it should be a like a, a park. I know a beach is a park, but anyway, that's my mental problem. So all the state parks and national parks have some kind of an identifier. Kilo 1139, in this case, is the Chino Hill State Park. It's pretty close to my house. And if I click on more info, it'll give me pertinent information like where it's at. Uh, it'll give me a link to the website, whether it's active. Please check that it's active. And like, see, oh, look at all these contacts people have made. There's all kinds of people going out there. Pretty good stuff. Good info to at least let you know, is this a park that's like good to activate? 240 activations, 260 attempts, 9,564 QSOs. Now there's there's more it. method to my madness here. Chino Hills is a park, right? So there's an area somewhere on this map that is and isn't that park. And it's our job as POTA activators to figure out what that is. And unfortunately, as much as I love this POTA website, there are not great aspects of it when it comes to determining where the park boundaries are. And let's see if we can find the park boundary here. It's true. There's like a green hue that's kind of like in this area. But I don't know. I don't really get a good feel of where the park is. I'm sure that if I'm in an area that looked like a park, I could probably qualify and say that I was. But as a ham, I want to try and be as accurate as possible. So what I generally recommend people do is pull up their state state park. So there's states, state park, GIS data and maps. California happens to have a, a, a pretty decent one. And this automated at map, when you pull it up, will break it up into districts. We're obviously going to go into Los Angeles County, which is where I'm at. And if I, oh, what's this green, all this green over here? Well, that is the park boundary for Chino Hill State Park. And if we go back and compare and contrast to the POTA map, yeah, I can see that squares right there. Let me go back. Yeah, there's that square. So it's kind of in the ballpark, but actually Chino Hills is way bigger than I thought it was. And in fact, look at these wild squares that's off here that's just kind of like hanging out on their own. That's pretty crazy. All right, so you got your park. Uh, you know where you're going to go. Hopefully, you've got a pretty good idea of, of where you should be situated and whatnot. Does that just mean you go out into the park and you start just going nuts? Uh, no, probably not. And we're going to cover a bit more of it, but I wanted to make kind of a shout out to the ARRL. They just released a book called The Parks on the Air Book. And we're going to go through a little bit uh, in a little bit here because... I think it's pretty, it's kind of cool because all the people in this book are active POTA operators, including that guy right there. He's he's actually a YouTuber, KB9VBR, right on. But they go through the gear they use, what their favorite aspects of POTA are, like a POTA story. It's all really helpful information. So links are going to be in the description. I, in fact, have a coupon code that you can avail yourself of. I'm not an affiliate of any of this, but the ARRL did send me this book. I enjoyed reading it, and I'll share a little bit of it with you as we go further in the video. Uh, the next thing you're going to have to do once you have your POTA account, you know the location of where you're going to activate, is get yourself a logging software or some kind of piece of logging gear. It could be that lovely ARRL logbook that's right here, right? Or you can get yourself a app. I like to use Hammers, which is Hotel Alpha Mary Romeo Sierra. And it is available on 
iOS, Android, Mac OS, Windows, Ubuntu, Rasp Ubuntu, Raspbian, etc. And it's a very simple logging software. It works with Poda, it works with Soda, Summit's on the air, and it just is a generic log that I end up using a lot when I am operating Portable. We're going to talk about the advantages of using an app versus a physical logbook in uh, as we go further along. But after you go ahead and go through the process of saying, I'm going out to the park, we're going to make this whole thing happen. You need to get ready for the day of. And you facilitate that by going to the Parks on the Air page and adding a, an activation. So adding an activation is going to be for the park you're going to, the rough estimate of time that you think you're going to be there, and the kind of, I guess, thought, what frequency you'd like to use. And then you could leave something like single sideband, right? For SSB. So if I'm going to Kilo 1139, my favorite park, oh, there was a typo. Make sure you do that right because it'll update to Chino Hills. Input the time you want. So let's say I'm going to go on Saturday. I'm going to wrap up on Saturday and then start time in UTC. I don't know what time I'm going to be at UTC, probably around uh, 9 a.m. UTC time. Something along those lines. Pretty late. I don't know. Haven't decided. Anyway, doesn't matter. Then you set a frequency. Again, you're not going to be set to the frequency, but it's to more or less tell people to look out for you on 20 meters or 40 meters, etc. And then last thing is you're going to say single sideband or uh, FT8 or CW, and that will actually change the mode of your activation to let people know which mode they should be looking out for you. Now, creating an activation is a forward planning tool. You don't have to do that. In fact, if your park has internet access via your phone, you can just add a spot. And a spot is basically saying, I'm at that park right now, and I'm going to get started with my POTA. Come hunt me, come make a contact, come add me in your log. Now, for that, that's a little bit more my style. That's usually what I use more often than not. And what I do is I'll go to a frequency. Oftentimes, I'm north of 300, so 325 is usually what I start at. And then I say, oh, by the way, no period. No periods in POTA. And then Kilo 1139. So I'll go to 14.325 on my radio and start calling Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu. Is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use? And if I'm not getting a lot of feedback or nobody's coming back to me, I'm already here. I'm already doing a POTA. You want to work a park to park? Uh, then I'll go ahead and make my spot. And I'll say maybe starting out on single sideband and hit spot. What that tells everybody is, Everybody on this website is now going to see my Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu pop up at Kilo 1139 with my frequency, the state that I'm in, some pertinent info, and it'll say single sideband. So they'll know to come chase me single sideband on 14.325. Makes sense, right? Should be anyway, hopefully. Now, you out in the field, you might start getting an absolute pile up of people calling you back, replying to you with their call sign. Don't get too flustered. I know this can be a lot for someone to take the first time they do a Parks on the Air activation. I recommend, if you can, go do a Parks on the Air activation with somebody who's already done a Parks on the Air activation, and you can follow in their lead. <laughs> Catch you. Kilo Indy 5, Sierra Link, uh, Lima, Mike, 5-9, into Park 10, 48, Montesano, and Huntsville, Alabama. Or if you'd like to get your feet wet as a hunter, well, it's pretty easy. To get your feet wet as a hunter, all you need to do is go back to the Parks on the Air Active Spots page and then just sort by whatever it is you're interested in doing. So maybe you only have a 20-meter dipole at home. Well, that's fine. And your primary mode of operation is single sideband. Great. That's fine, too. So right here in California, we've got somebody on 14.233, and they are operating in the Eugene O'Neill His National Historic Site. And you can go down this whole list looking for people, looking for call signs you may recognize, including my call sign, uh, Kilo 8, Mike, Romeo, Delta. You know who that is. As well as uh, numerous other people, right? And what I like to do is look for the people that have the most recent herd information. So this individual was last heard two minutes ago, right? Uh, not bad. There's usually pretty hot and heavy when uh, it's a really good POTA activator or they have a really good station set up. It'll be like once every you know 50 seconds or so. But if you start to scroll down and you start seeing, oh, last heard 18 minutes ago, it's highly likely that that individual is not uh, on the air anymore. Oh, Dockwiller State Beach. That's like right down the street from me. Uh, that's actually right down the street from my work. That's pretty cool. 
so if, if that's the case, you might want to look at a different band. So what's going on in 40? Well, 40's not bad. Let's see when the last heard is on their single. Oh, 53 seconds ago from a single sideband. And this is a KA4KOE at K2175 in Fort McAllister. So as a, as a chaser, you oftentimes, well, you should go ahead and hop on your radio and try and make contact just immediately with the people you hear on your radio. If you're hunting for specific folks, you might want to just pull up the spots and give it a shot that way. I should take this moment to mention park-to-park -park contacts. Park-to-park -park contacts are fantastic for those activating because it allows you to activate both chaser points and or hunter points. I know the soda guys and the and the poda guys get upset if you call somebody a chaser versus a hunter when you're a home station. For me, it's interchangeable. So if you're hunting somebody from home and you work them in the park, that's one thing. But if you're in a park and you work a park, that's a park to park, and you get park chasing points for that or a park chasing contact. So make sure when you're on the air doing your activation, if you hear someone yell park to park at you in the radio, you go ahead and stop what you're doing and reply to them. Finish your contact, of course, but take the park to park next. Just say that too. Take the park to park next. Who's the park to park? Now, if you're in the park and before you start calling CQ to what they call run the frequency, you can kind of scan around listening for park to park stations or other park activators. I always kick off and end my parks on the air sessions or activations by hunting for other parks to get those sweet, sweet park to park contacts. CQ, Parks on the Air, CQ, Parks on the Air, Kilo, India 6, November, Alpha, Zulu. Kilo 9, Lima, Charlie Yankee. Uh, Kilo 9, Lima, Charlie Yankee, 5959, into Park Kilo 1139. QSL, the 5-9, uh, you are 5757, Central Indiana, QSL. Thank you for five seven into uh, oh sorry into uh, Louisiana. Oh, you know what? I just screwed your <laughs> I screwed up your call sign. I, I clicked off the log. Give me your call sign one more time. Sorry. No problem. It's Kilo Nine Lima Charlie Yankee, uh, located here Central Indiana QSL. Oh, I got it. I was wrestling with my iPad. Yeah, got it. Thank you for the contact seven three. Roger, Roger. What was your park number again, please? Kilo 1139. QSL, Kilo 1139. Thank you very much. Good luck. Good hunting. 73, K9, LCY, clear. All right. Thanks so much. This is Parks on the Air, QRZ. Just wish you on the cluster, Josh. Alpha Charlie 5, Oscar. Alpha Charlie 5, Oscar. Thanks so much. This is Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, calling CQ, Parks on the Air. Now, you did it. You got 10 contacts. That's all you need to get. It's actually not that difficult, particularly if you're running a 100-watt radio and you have a good antenna. You've got your log. It could be a paper log or it could be a log that's in your phone or tablet or something. What do you do with it? Well, that's where the most, I think, the most important part of Parks on the Air happens, updating and sending your logs. As if you're not sending your logs, no one's getting any credit for the work you did and the work the chasers did to help you activate. So make sure you submit your logs. Even, even if you did not complete the, the pod activation, if you only got eight contacts, you still got to update those logs because the chasers need your log to get points. That's right. In Poda, it's the activator that uploads the logs, not the chasers. So if the chase chasers don't have to do anything, they're just there to give you the context. You have to upload those logs as activators. That's your one most important job. So make sure you do it. Anyway, back to the website. So if you click on your call sign, KI6NAZ is mine. I don't know what's yours. Go to my log uploads and all you have to do is drag and drop that log file from hammers directly onto this if you made a log book in hammers i like to use the identifier for the park that i'm in so kilo 1139 i make a new log book for every time i go out and do poda when i'm done i go back up to the log book page i click the little gear icon and then i click export and i send it to myself either you know via airdrop or via email or whatever to my computer or you can just log into the poda website and do it that way as well via your phone now what if you only have a manual log or a paper log no big deal you can just click the manual log entry button right here 
And you can go through and set up all the details that you need. Your operator, your info, the state that you're in, if it's park to park, the call sign of the person that you work, and you can go through the whole thing. So the only thing that POTA really cares about, and this is kind of a cool thing about Parks on the Air, is they want to know what band you were on. So let's go back to 20. And in our hypothetical setup, we were on single sideband. So I'll click single sideband. And I was KI6NAZ, right? Uh, now, every call that worked me, I'm going to type out their call in here, as well as their state that they're from. That's recommended. <laughs> it's really not even required. As well as the optional park to park. And that optional park to park is important because that gives them those uh, chaser points or hunter points. And then that's it. You update that your log's all done, add entries until you have all your entries, click the boxes, and then submit your log. Pretty easy. You can even download the ADIF file if you'd like to hang on to it as a backup. So let's take a look at what our friends over at the ARRL came up with. Uh, this is not a big book, but it's full of really cool pictures and really good information from people that are often activating POTA. And there is a space for chasers as well. The really interesting thing that I find here, and, and I think one of the reasons why I, I like the fact the AWRL made this book is Parks on the Air came out of one of the AWRL's most successful events, the National Parks on the Air event. At the end of that one year event, they were done. They, they, they washed their hands of National Parks on the Air, not because they didn't like doing it or anything, but they do yearly events, and that was it. It was time for that uh, event to complete. And so they passed it off to folks that would pick up the mantle and run with it, and they did. And that's how POTA got created. And the great thing about POTA is it also includes state parks. So it's a lot more inclusive and welcoming for lots of different people that you know, may not be close to a national park. So take a look at that shot. That is cool. I really do love the images uh, that that people unlike me <laughs> get to see when they go do a parks on the air. Isn't that cool? I absolutely love uh, some of these shots. I've been to some beautiful places, but a lot of them are soda locations. So hey, there's Jerica Good Game and Steve Good Game, K5ATA and KI5HTA. Those those folks. They're on the YouTubes. At least Steve did a lot more YouTube before he became uh, one of the leads for education at the ARRL. So shout out to them. They're both active POTA activators. And this first one is Jerrica's writing. And she walks through her kit, which is a really simple kit bag. 705 transmitter, a battery, an NFED half wave, an iPad for hammers, and some, uh, some chips and drinks. That's it. That's what she does. And that's all she needs to get a successful contact uh, in the logs. And I think that's one of the most important things about Parks on the Air is that you, you can build a station that's real high speed, low drag, and you can get done with a contact in a park really quickly, but you don't have to either. Or it can be kits that just fit in your backpack, right? So the book covers how to become a hunter first up front, which is chapter two. And I think that's where most people start, right? You got a radio at home, you get on the air, that's probably the best way to get started with this. From my point of view, though, I don't know. I, I really want to encourage everybody watching to try out being an actual activator. I think that really, really brings amateur radio to life, particularly for you technician licensed folks. So they cover a lot of the things we already talked about here, but they add a lot more detail, like home station. Look at this home station, plus portable, everything else from WJIB. Now, I'm not going to go through all of this, but I want to hit a couple of cool points here. What if you're motorcycle portable? <laughs> well, you might have a kit that's more this size. A GoPro for recording the contacts, a paper log, and then just a Morse code machine. This is the QRP Labs radio. And you can have this in a little GoPro bag, and that's all you need to be able to ride around on a motorcycle to your favorite parks on the air and get on the air. In fact, I think that's... Yeah, this is it all packed up. Look at that. Super cool. It's a kit after my own heart. Now, what if you uh, don't want to do HF? What if you're a technician, you're thinking about upgrading to general, but you don't know that you want to go get the license just yet? And you may not want to buy a 10 meter only radio, or maybe you just don't want to buy an HF radio at all. Well, you can still do Parks on the Air and Soda and participate in the June AWRL VHF, UHF, con or just VHF contest. You can do that. 
It helps, though, if you've got Pikes Peak in your backyard, so you're outside Colorado Springs, Colorado. But you can definitely do it, and uh, there's many people who have. Here is K0JJW operating FM on two meters for a soda and poda activation. And I have I have done this. I've activated sodas just using the national calling frequency, or 146.580, what we're calling the adventure frequency. K0NR, that's a call sign that I, I know. They just talk about here, this is all just for VHF, UHF comms, mainly VHF. But yeah, you can absolutely use line of sight communication to do parks on the air. It's more difficult, I, I'd argue, but it's it's doable. And I think a fun challenge. Why do ham radio if you can't make it a challenge at the same time, right? All right. What's uh? Who's our last person? We're gonna wrap it up with a with a really cool guy with a really cool YouTube channel and blog and all kinds of really great videos. So go check out K4SWL. Here's his kit or one of his kits. You think this man has one kit? Come on, come on now. He's also running a QRP Labs radio, a talent cell battery, a simple little tablet to write down key and earbuds. And really, that's all you need. Of course, he's he's got antennas too, guys. Don't worry. In this case, it looks like it's a, an NFED, which I've seen him deploy in his uh, many different videos. But yeah, hey, look, you can go check him out right there. Look at that shout out the ARRL is giving him. So yeah, there you go. There's some handy tips on throw line getting your bag or your antenna in the air, all from K4SWL. A wealth, a wealth of information. And last thing I should mention, a really nice afterword from Sean Kutzko. And Sean Kutzko, who's been on my channel multiple times to talk about operating satellites, he was one of, he was one of a few people that helped run NPOTA, National Parks on the Air, right? Which is the father of Poda. So give a big shout out to a great guy, Sean Kutzko. Now, the best thing about Parks on the Air, I find, is that it's a pretty light rules type of event, which I really appreciate in a world as complicated and sometimes as very rules oriented as amateur radio is. Parks on the Air is more about encouraging you to get out onto a park get your station good and ready for portable operations, and then obviously for the folks at home to participate in the event by hunting for the people that are out there and activating. I love it. It's a great event. I highly recommend you avail yourself of the links below to the information that's available. The Parks on the Air website has a load of great documents on getting started and helpful tips and tricks, different Q&As all kinds of things that they've picked up over the years of running this great event. It has only gotten easier in the form of its new log submission tool to get on the air and get active in parks on the air. And another big shout out to our friends over at the ARRL. Go check out the link in the description to the coupon to get yourself a parks on the air book along with the log book and sticker combo that's available on the ARRL website. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I am KI6NAZ here at the Hammer Radio Crash Course. And until I talk to you again, 73.